Yo, what's up everybody? I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing Shadow Prey by John Sanford. This is the second book in his Prey series. I think there's like 30 some odd books in the Prey series now. In fact, I'll take you over to my collection of Prey novels. They're right there. On the bottom shelf, right there in a the corner, tucked away, amongst my huge library of uh, books. The Prey novels, I don't know why they're at the bottom. They just are. It's, you gotta put something at the bottom. Anyway, let's talk about Shadow Prey. It came out in 1990. And we're gonna discuss a little bit about the time period it came out in. As opposed to, uh, what is it, 2022? Things have changed. <laughs> Writing has changed. Writing styles have changed. The sensitivity readers have changed what we can have and have not do and do or do and do not in a book. And we're going to go over that a little bit with this book here. The prologue, um, like I said, this is his second in the Prey novel series. Lucas Davenport is our main character. He's the uh, Minneapolis police investigator. Um... You know, we'd always discuss the covers first. I like this cover. It's just, it's simple. It could be a horror novel. It could be a thriller. It could be a mystery. I just like it. It's just bold. It's just bold. I love a big, bold font on, um, I love a big, bold font. Anyway, enough about me. The prologue. This was where things get dicey right off the get-go. The prologue happens in the 1960s. This book was written in the 1990, in 1990. It is set in 1990. The prologue, however, is from the 60s in Phoenix. Keep in mind, this is a, a series set in Minneapolis, Minnesota, but the prologue happens in Phoenix. And it's about a police department, in particular a cop by the last name of Clay. And for whatever reason, now I work in law enforcement, I have done so for 14 years, and I gotta say, <laughs> If this is something that the Phoenix Police Department actually did, holy shit, what a bad idea. They used to offer, the police department used to offer to act as taxi cabs for drunk people and get them home. Particularly drunk young girls is what they specialized in. If a dude called and needed a taxi, well, he'd take a regular taxi. If a hot young girl needed a taxi, well, then the police would gladly give her a ride home. Oh, you can already see the trouble that's going to come of that. <laughs> oh, and it does. It's bad. Every cop is involved in this depravity. And Clay, um, he... Uh, gives a very young, pretty young Navajo girl a ride home one night and um, takes advantage of her. And uh, what happens is the repercussions of that are that some uh, the Crow family, there's a, the Indian, there's a, the, by, go by the name of Crow, the Crow family Indians, they come and uh, they fuck up old Clay, the cop, and uh, take their revenge. And um, that's where we leave the prologue. Then we jump to the present day, which is 1990, and in Minnesota, Minneapolis, there's um, murders happening. Um, in particular, uh, kind of famous people are getting killed. Not only there's a famous person in Minneapolis that gets killed in Oklahoma City and in New York City, and they're killed in a very, very similar grisly way, and that is with a ceremonial Indian uh, stone knife. And the witnesses say that that is what the killer used each time. The killer cut the person's throat with the, a very recognizable Indian stone ceremonial knife. And they kind of uh, pin the um, murders onto this group of sort of uh, Native Americans that are, are, are kind of have a, this assassins club of native americans and um now we're going to get into the sensitivity part because this is not the type of novel that could be written today because um it's about 
Native Americans doing very bad things and committing serial murders. And I just, you just, I know the publish, I know the landscape. That just, you can't, you, you wouldn't be able to write that. Um, not only that, but it's there's some very racist commentary in here, not just about Native Americans, but about black people and Mexican people and everything. Now, the characters are being racist. Not the author. The characters are saying racist things. Well, let's make that distinction. This has nothing to do with John Sanford. In fact, he probably knows nowadays, he'd agree with me, this would be a hard book to get published with some of the things that are in it, because it's dealing with you know, a marginalized uh, community and um, making them look like killers. Uh, now, they are doing their killing, uh, their revenge killings. I mean, they, they think that they're doing a noble act. And the main killer is a guy named Shadow Love. Now, um, Lucas Davenport, uh, that's why it's called Shadow Prey, because the main Indian killer is, is his Indian name is Shadow Love. Lucas Davenport now has to investigate these murders, and since one of the murders took place in Minnesota and one of them took place in New York, they send a New York investigator to Minnesota to compare notes with Lucas, and of course, she's a smoking hot one herself. Now, Lucas has already got a girlfriend, and, her, and his girlfriend has a kid, and he's already pretty close to these people, and they support him in his law enforcement career, but Lucas Davenport also has a secondary career where he writes role-playing games. He writes Dungeons and Dragons role-playing games. It's sort of his side job. And he makes decent money at both. Kind of like me. I work in law enforcement and I write fantasy novels. I make decent money at both careers. So I can relate to Mr. Lucas Davenport. And, um, you know, I mean, he got his girlfriend, but now he's got this cop from New York. She's a smoking hot. I mean, and we can't say, is, what, is Lucas gonna... Uh, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? I'm not going to tell you how that plot twist goes. But anyway, let's just say this is a great murder mystery. I like this murder mystery. It's probably way better than... Rules of Prey was a really, really good debut novel by John Sanford. And this follow-up is every bit as chilling and scary and mysterious. And it's just written so well. And the dialogue is so great. And it's a shame that we can't have this kind of dialogue in books anymore. Um, and I know I've mentioned this on my channel before with like some of the older Robert Crayas books and some of the older Robert Parker books. Um, you know, some of the old Spencer novels. It's just, they're just ground in a gritty reality that um, a lot of authors just shy away from nowadays just because they don't want to get canceled. And um, like I said, the bad guys in this book, would never be allowed to be the bad guys in any modern day book. Um, I like this. I'm going to give this about a, um, I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. I just thought it was a great, great mystery. And I love all the Prey novels. 